This is Glasgow, a European city of culture. The Institute of Counseling was established here in September 1985. Expansion has been tremendous, with now over 5,000 students. Its founding aim is to provide education and training in counseling skills, specifically within a clinical, pastoral and Christian context. We specialize in adult education, with personal and professional development to the caring professions and carers. This is accomplished by distance learning, courses, seminars and summer schools. Our popular counseling skills courses are at certificate and diploma level, ranging from six months to two years. In this group session, the counsellors discuss the theory and application of the force field analysis, a problem-solving model. Notice how the counsellors discuss its use in different applications. It's important for you to discover how you might use it. As you watch the discussion and the session that follows, try to answer these three questions. What are the main stages of the force field analysis? In what way did Pat use the force field analysis to enable the client to have direction? What is the connection between the proposed plan of action and the suggested time scale? In this group discussion, Neil introduces the force field analysis. Listen to the responses of the counsellors to this model. Do you agree with them? Kathy opens the discussion. Well, this is just our counsellors' discussion on the professional problems and professional practice as counsellors. And it seems that we've got two models that we can use when we're in difficulties. I am in difficulties with a client who can't, doesn't seem to be going anywhere, we're being blocked. Or the client seems to be blocking everything I know of. And it seems that you um, have got some ideas of models that you could help us look at today. I think one model that we can possibly actually apply is what's called a force field analysis, which basically comes from a problem solving focus, where if someone can negotiate a specific goal, say changing house, but there's uh, some advantages to changing the house, you know, perhaps they want to go to a larger house or in another area and then there's the hindering forces that are against that. Uh, possibly there'll be an increase of mortgage that's further away from the schools or whatever. Then really, rather than someone being stuck and saying, I don't know if I can move or I don't know if I should move or not, it, it's an exciting way to say to them, OK, what the goal is, you want to move house. Let's write down what's... The hindering forces to you moving house, say five of them, for instance, and then let's write down the facilitating forces. Let's balance and wrestle with each one of those, and then we can come up with a plan of action that would actually help us to overcome the hindering forces by emphasising and, and utilising the facilitating ones. I've used it a number of times, uh, too, when I was, when I was a student counsellor particularly, um, and I think I was always a little bit cautious about using it. I'm not quite sure why. I think probably because I, I, I realised that at times I wasn't all that comfortable using it. Um, it's quite a analytical, um, you know, decision logical approach. And and I, I although I'm really quite logical. Um, I think that I, I was cautious about trying to f slot the client into that particular way of working. I think it's important to bring that out that when you begin learning skills, and this is a stage three skill, an action skill, force field analysis, that uh, it's like riding a bike, isn't it really? <laughs> At first, you know, you're so concentrated on actually riding the bike, and then eventually, you know, sort of, uh, you do unconsciously 
you know, the, the fact you just j jump on the bike and you're down the hill. Mm. And uh, I, th I think it's a very important point you brought up, William, that that we don't just say, well, this is what we do now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's what our inside is saying, you know, using our intuition. Is this the appropriate time to do this? And if it is, well, let's go with mm -hmm. it. If it's not, we don't force it on the, on right. the client and yes. say, OK, you're now at stage three, this is what we do. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's disastrous if you turn around, right. you know, and you're, in, you're into something other than counselling yes. at yeah. that point. I mean, I, could, I can see the difficulty arising where, as a counsellor, you get hung up on, uh, within a session, needing to do practical things and the person mm -hmm. leaving the session with a whole list of things that needs to be done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. And that's the danger, yes. I think, that yeah. can be around yeah. um, because it takes away from the, the purpose yeah. of the session itself. It's not, although these things are useful, it's not the main purpose as I would see it. It's about empowering the person to be able to um, take responsibility and set mm. set goals for themselves and and to to achieve them, but not to feel put off about coming back to see you next week if they haven't completed yeah, right. yeah. the targets <laughs> that they've set for themselves. Yeah. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the force field analysis? Having discussed the force field analysis and its application, let's now look at its components. First, we have the goal which the client wants to achieve. Then, the client lists the hindering forces that keep him back from achieving this goal. Then, the client lists the facilitating forces that form a field of movement to advance him towards the goal. Having listed the hindering and facilitating forces, the client now works out a realistic plan of action. This plan of action pushes back the hindering forces by strengthening the facilitating ones. The field of movement then moves towards the client's goal. As we have seen, the key stages of the force field analysis are Goal, negotiated, List hindering forces. List facilitating forces. Plan of action. Work out. If having worked through the model, the goal is found to be unrealistic, i.e., I want to learn to drive and pass my test within a month, then a more realistic goal can be found by working out a plan of action to achieve part of the goal i.e. either I want to learn to drive or I want to...